Apple's 10th generation iPads have launched to unusually mixed reviews, mainly because it's such an odd device. On the one hand, we have some genuine improvements that consumers will appreciate, but these sit alongside some very odd design choices. For the first time in any iPad, we have a landscape front-facing camera and a USB-C port has replaced Lightning on the standard iPad. But that's when it gets weird. The iPad 10 only supports the Gen 1 Apple Pencil, which relies on the Lightning port that Apple just axed. You'd kind of expect to see support for the wirelessly charging second gen pencil, so what gives? This is a question that baffled reviewers and it's one we're going to try to answer today. So let's dig in and take a look at how repairable this tablet might be. But before we get started, if you like what we do here, hit the like and subscribe button, it really helps us out. Let's get some heat on that screen to loosen the glue and we're gonna use the ever so helpful anti-clamp to create an opening and cut away the adhesive. The glass and digitizer come away revealing the liquid retina display and some cables buried underneath. The screen is held in place with a few screws and the brackets themselves are adhered to the base. Short work for the sharp end of the spudger. Lifting the panel up, we can now remove the three shields and disconnect the ribbon cables, freeing up the liquid retina display and digitizer screen. Now let's stop here and pull up the iPad Air 5 for a side-by-side -side comparison. The claim is that Apple couldn't fit the wireless charging assembly for the Pencil Gen 2 in here because that's where the landscape camera now sits. And as we can see, this seems to be the case. As it stands, the magnets on the Apple Pencil Gen 2 don't quite line up with the iPad 10's magnets. Now, the wireless charging coil would be sitting in the center, but if it were to be moved down, you could theoretically have a pencil that can attach here, but then the wireless charging coil would interfere with the magnet placement. It's a bit of a catch-22 and it's something that the Apple engineers are no doubt working on figuring out. The camera module is the next component to come out, along with the shield holding the Touch ID and rear camera ribbon cables. This is the first front-facing landscape-oriented camera we've seen in an iPad, and they're hoping you'll think the ability to use center stage in video conferences is worth more than having to use the silly adapter for your pencil. The battery screw and USB-C port screws also need to come out, and the speaker cables and antennas all need to be disconnected before we can remove the next layer of components. While I'm here, I'll go ahead and remove the rear-facing camera too. The logic board is glued on tight, but a little heat loosens the glue enough to free it from the case. The USB-C ribbon cable is welded to the logic board, which is a huge design fail. Components exposed to high mechanical wear should always be modular. Now, it's not particularly surprising that they've welded the ribbon cable onto the logic board. We've seen that for a few generations now. What's more surprising is that they still haven't made the thing modular. On a positive note, Apple is slowly beginning to switch from Lightning to USB-C. Device manufacturers are universally adopting USB-C and slowly doing away with proprietary connectors like Apple's lightning ports in a bid to save consumers money and reduce the number of obsolete charging bricks and cables ending up in landfills. Of course, they're doing this altruistically, not because of EU legislation forcing them to do it. Deshielding the components reveals the A14 system-on chip, which first made its appearance in the 4th gen iPad and the iPhone 12 line of devices. A detailed chip ID will be released on our website soon, so keep an eye out for that. The final part to come out is the dual cell lithium polymer battery rated at 28.93 watt hours. Speaking of batteries, check out our battery explosion, I mean safety, video we recently published for some tips on how to safely remove lithium based batteries from your devices. Apple helpfully provides us with four squeaky pull tabs, which provides a convenient and extremely satisfying means of removing the glue underneath the battery when it doesn't break. So what did we learn from this teardown? On repairability, we had to remove the glued down logic board before we could even access the battery. That's a no-go. The battery should be easily accessible the moment you're in the device. The USB-C port is also welded to the logic board, which would make repairs very difficult for the average person. And of course, there's parts availability to deal with. As of right now, Apple's self-service repair program doesn't even list parts or tools for current or last gen iPads. And there you have it, the iPad 10 a slightly disappointing device with some real strengths, like the USB-C port, for example. If only they'd added Apple Pencil Gen 2 support and made that USB-C port modular, then you might have had a device that makes more sense. 